Hey everybody, welcome to The Commit, episode 27. I'm Neil. And I'm Richard. And we're back in the studio from PenApps. Yeah, thanks everyone who watched that episode. Neil, what's new? Cool, we got two new online hackathons for you. First up is the Yelp Hackathon. This is their first ever online hackathon. There's $8,500 in prizes, so you don't want to miss this. We're actually going to cut yeah. in a second over to a API demo with Tomer from Yelp, so we'll give you everything you need to get started. That's cool. Anything else? Yeah, we got the Anything for me in particular? Yes, definitely one for you. We've got the Java Tools Challenge for Microsoft. So if you're big into Java and Cold Fusion, like you were years and years ago, Perfect. <laughs> um, the goal here is to actually use Visual Studio and um, sort of build new extensions and new apps with it to actually make it a better uh, development environment for Java. So there's actually eighty thousand dollars in prizes for this one. So Man, you the hackers are so definitely, lucky. I can't definitely in this. don't want to miss it. Yeah, we can't compete, but you can. Cool. Well, I've got some news for you. So if you want to hang out here and like with us and maybe even be on the commit next Thursday, we're holding Sit right here. Yeah, totally. Why not? We got dev post hacker hours. So this is cool. It's an event. We're opening up our office space. All of our dev team are coming to take part. And the idea is come in, hang out, eat some food, and hack on your projects. Anyone's welcome to come. And especially we want to encourage people that are maybe new to development to come. Uh, our developers love mentoring people. They're here to like help you get started on whatever you want to work on. Should be cool. And Richard will tell you all about Cold Fusion. Oh yeah, I'm, I've got you there. Maybe I'll help them win. <laughs> so. You know, there's all kinds of different hackathons in your area, right? and I always think there's a hackathon for every person. Yep. Now, if you're looking for that hackathon that's going to get you that seed round, that's going to put you in front of investors, and actually is all about creating a startup, you want to check out the launch hackathon that's taking place in San Francisco at the end of February. Really cool event. It's run by Launch, which is the organization of Jason Calacanis, full disclosure, an investor in DevPost. But you've got a few weeks left to apply, so check it out on DevPost, apply for that. I was there last year, it's a really cool hack from there, a lot of fun stuff going on. Yeah, definitely a cool place to hack. Awesome, so my final announcement, the PenApps Fellows Program. So this is really cool, you get to intern at lots of tech companies in Philly, really cool, and I think that the deadline's just about to be extended? Yeah, they extended it for about a week, so you got a couple more days. Awesome, check that out. So in this part, we actually wanted to tell you about a new alpha product that we've got out on DevPost now, which is our team pages section. And team pages are all about helping you find exactly the right job, you know? And all about their really meeting the team, finding out how the company works and seeing that. And tell right. us a bit more about it, Neil. Sure, so the way we built team pages is we really want you to find that job that you're gonna love with a team that fits you at a company that sort of has the right, um, benefits, has the right culture, et cetera, that's going to help you grow. So we want to help you meet the developers that you'll be working with. We want to sort of show you about the hiring process and the benefits and sort of what to expect with that. We even want you to sort of see the stack that you'll be working on and what and how that uh, team's development process works. Are they a Kanban team? Are they you know, a sprint team? How often do they deploy? Things like that. So we've got a couple of these pages up already. We've got ones from Dots. Genius, Energy Hub, Datavore, obviously our own from DevPost, and we're trying to release them at a pretty good clip so that we always have new ones coming out every week. Yeah, a lot of great content there. We had a lot of fun actually creating these pages and working with the teams to learn how they are. So check them out and we hope you enjoy. Today we're going to talk a little bit about the Yelp API. Uh, as you know, we just launched the the Yelp Hackathon, our first uh, online hackathon ever with Yelp. And joining me today is Tomer, who is the He's an engineer and uh, the developer evangelist over at Yelp. Hey, Tomer. Hey, everyone. Thanks for joining us. So um, obviously, we mentioned the, the hackathon we're working on right now. Um, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. How long have you been at Yelp? So I've been at Yelp for about two years. Uh, I moved out to San Francisco um, yeah, back January 2014, I guess now. It's a little while ago. Um, from Atlanta, then I went to school at Georgia Tech, where I studied computer science. Cool. And um, sort of tell us a little bit about your favorite part of Yelp. Like, how does it help your life? Uh, I mean, I use Yelp on the da like a daily basis. Um, every time I'm out, I pull out my phone, check the Yelp app. Like, where do I go get drinks? Where do I go get some food? Um, how do I find a doctor? It basically controls everything I do when I'm traveling around the city. Cool. So um, tell us a little bit about the API. What kinds of information can we get out of that? So the key focus of the API is providing people with uh, the search API, letting people pull local businesses based on locations and uh, geospatial data. 
Um, we want to be able to let people insert the locations and local businesses anywhere where they have any kind of location information, like GPS or a city name, um, just to help aid in getting people that information. Cool. And so it kind of breaks down into sort of the two main APIs, right? The search API to find businesses based on search terms, and then the business API to get more detailed information on a particular business. Yeah. So you have the search API, which gives you some high level information, and the business API, which does like a business lookup. Cool. And so um, what I thought was neat about the um, sort of the, the search API is that whether it's by city address, neighborhood, or even like uh, latitude, longitude, bounding box, you could have a very fine grain sort of search parameter or I guess search area. And then, um, you know, it could be something like tacos or like you, like you said before, doctor, you know, you, you can give it a, a very general term and you get um, some uh, pretty good set of results back. Yeah. So the cool thing about the search API is it exposes Yelp search as an API. So anything you'd be able to do on Yelp.com, you can do the API as far as search goes. Um, the idea with the different location parameters is that you know for different experiences, if you're on a mobile device, latitude, longitude might make more sense as you've got the GPS baked in. Um, if you're looking for a location that's not where you are right now, having the ability to search by a city or by a neighborhood also makes a lot of sense. Cool. And um, so what, what changes when we go to the business API? What, what types of data can we get out of that once we've actually found um, maybe an interesting business through search? So the key differences there are the business API will return your review snippet. So you'll get a brief idea of what people think of the business. And you have the ability to also expose action links, which lets you uh, drop straight into like a platform order. So if you want to do delivery or make a reservation, uh, we'll give you a link to go straight to that. Cool. And uh, those action links are a relatively new addition to the API. Is that right? Yeah, we added those, I want to say, a couple months ago. Cool. Uh, so cool. Why don't we actually take a look at the API? Maybe uh, dive into the API console. Sure. Oops. All right. So we're on the developer site. Uh, once you've got key set up, if you hit the button called API console, we'll have every field that you can search by. So we'll do tacos, and you can also see the query update live, uh, and we'll set it to New York. Uh, if you do view response, we'll set up the query, make the request, and you can kind of scroll through and see all the data that comes back. So we do provide you the region. We'll show you what our search said was the center of the query itself. And you'll see how many businesses in New York match with that, and then you'll get the first 20 businesses. So you can see this category is a Mexican food, which makes sense for tacos. Um, You've got the name, some other metadata, like location, all the nice stuff. And then you can keep going down the list. That, uh, that first result, Los Tacos number one, is a very popular choice here at the Dev Post office. <laughs> uh, yeah, Yelp search knows what it's doing. Some pretty, some pretty cool stuff going on behind the scenes. So now once we got this, we can find the, let's see, we'll find the ID. We can take this. Switch over to the business endpoint, put the ID in. And if we do include action links, the response. So we can see we've got the review snippet right there. Cool. And so this restaurant might not actually have any action links. Um, so the response there will depend on the restaurant itself. But yeah, you can see that there's a little bit more detail of a breakdown than you get from the search URL, uh, search API. Cool. And um, a little bit about the um, sort of the review snippet. Is that usually the most, like the highest rated review or the most recent? How is that determined? Uh, so we use the recommendation algorithm on the back end. So the review we feel like will be the best to display. Um, it's not based on rating or recency or anything like that specifically. Cool. Well, thanks so much for showing us how the API works. Yeah, for sure. So um, we've gotten a great look at the API. I think it'll be a really cool thing for uh, hackers to use in their apps and uh, see if they can incorporate different types of business data, even rating data, maybe some sort of local search stuff into what they're working on. Uh, any other suggestions that maybe about, about uh, different parts of the API that people should take a look at? Uh, so we have a lot of stuff on GitHub to help out. We've got some code samples. Um, we've got a client lib for Ruby and for Python. Um, we've also got a sample Rails app uh, if people want to see it, uh, 
example integration on the Ruby side. Um, I'd recommend checking those out. Those could help people get started pretty quick. Cool. Definitely sounds like a lot of fun. Thanks so much, Tomer. Yeah, of course. Anytime. All right. This week for staff picks, I picked SC Drift. This is a project from Hack UCSC, which was our thousandth hackathon. Love that hackathon. Right, so what this project was is the team actually bolted an Arduino and a big pack of sensors on the bottom of a longboard so they could measure speed and sort of the intensity of, uh, of their slides as they were sort of skating down a hill, which is cool because it kind of gamifies that sort of street surfing. I want this, cool but stuff. does it also accept my insurance details when I start playing with the hack? No, you're just going to fall face first. You just need to wear a helmet. You'll be fine. Oh, that's brutal. OK, well, I picked a much safer hack, DocuFlow. This is really cool, Neil. So it uses eye tracking. It uses a muse band to check where you're looking at in a document when you read it and how intensely you're looking at it. So it's kind of like reading your mind and seeing how hard you're looking at stuff? Yeah, definitely. It's really cool. So I think it's a great way to like look through your text and see like which areas are people really focused on. And that could be something you're looking for, for like dramatic effect, or it could be maybe somewhere where you need to simplify the language or something, or maybe re-explain things. So Really cool project. Awesome to see some good UK hackers doing their thing. That's it for episode 27. 27 of The Commit. We'll see you next week. Happy hacking. Happy hacking.